Welcome back everyone. This time we're going to talk with you about the Paralens underwater camera. We've been using it for more than one year now and we had it in the water several times, somewhere in the three digits. So it is about time for a nice review and letting you know how it all went out. So first off, the camera comes in a nice little pack, all organized with the cable, with some mounts, with the grease for the seals and of course the camera itself. Now, the camera is super nice and simple to use which is I guess my favorite feature about it. So basically what you got is the blue ring where you can adjust between turning it on and off, video, photo, your favorite settings and the extra settings menu. Now all it takes is you put it onto the point that you want, for example, turning it on and off. And then you have your main trigger up here. You pull it back and it will turn on. And the way you know is it vibrates. Sounds don't work that well underwater anyways because you're always distracted, but the vibration actually does the trick. It doesn't matter if you have mounted on the side of a mask or if you hold it in your hand, you will feel the vibration. Only downside of it is the sound in the video. But after that, so now you got the camera on and you got a little reading here in the back. So at the beginning it will tell you how full the battery is. Also on the top it says how much space you still got on your memory card and also white balance and DCC, which I will get into a little bit later. Now, for the first bit, the video and photo images were stunning. And I was really blown away with it, with the settings that it came in without adjusting anything, it really performed pretty well right away. But once you get a little bit deeper into it, it gets really exciting. So for one, we use this thing for research purposes. So what I really like about it is that you can, in the bottom right of every image, every video, you can blend in the depth and the water temperature of whatever position you're in, which is good for us because we know instantly, okay, that date and time which you have in every video anyways we were in this location and that way you also have the temperature and depth with it so it just gives you a little bit more information right away obviously you can also stop blending that in and only have the crisp and clear image photo video whatever it is talking of video you can do up to 4k or up to 60 frames per second so 4k in 30 frames or 60 frames in two and a half 2.7k if you go to the photo setting, obviously, so a quick pull on the trigger will just take a picture. If you pull for longer, it will take like a 10 second video clip, which is pretty neat because it also means, again, doesn't matter what setting you're in, if you just pull it for a little bit longer, you get a short little video of whatever it is you're looking at. So just makes it a lot more convenient. Then this thing comes with a wide variety of mounts. So what we got is one that goes straight on the mask, works well on a normal mask. It does not work that well if you use it in combination with the scooter because it will start shaking. Uh, where it doesn't work so well is on a full face mask because just because of the angle of it, you always have the hose and some parts of the mask in the frame. What you will also realize is if you use it on the mask and you start shooting, above water you will have the mask in it but as soon as you're underneath the water just by the very nature of optics the mask disappears and you have a nice full frame of your video so aside from that another thing that you can do there's a really nice active community of people doing 3d printing out there so just looking at Paralens, we found a couple of pre-made models in 3d one of them was a mount to put it onto our water scooter, the scuba jet, which has a separate review in that video over there. But also you can find lots of little features like this. It's basically a protective cap to put it on. It does say that these lenses are super hardened glass and basically undestructible. Well, everyone who ever owned a camera knows that a stretch lens is really a pain in the neck. So put a cap on, doesn't hurt. And it's easy to print, just takes an hour or so. So, then, camera comes with a nice little lanyard. Super handy, but I wouldn't trust it 
with my life because, well, I was broke already. So make sure that the camera is secured to something else. Also, if you use it with any of the mounts, like the, the mask mount or the, any of them really, I always made sure to also have this on and secure it to something else. Just as a backup, because it would be a pretty expensive piece of gear to just lose it during the dive and not even realize. The things that it does miss, however, is it doesn't have a display. The Vaquita, the new version, does have one in the back, but it's definitely not a self camera. Fair enough, it's not what I wanted anyways. If selfies is what you do, well, of course you can try and just go and smile in it, but you will never know what you're actually shooting. So, one downside. What I did love about it is it does talk to your phone. So, up. Basically, on your phone you can have run the app for the Paralens and right after you dive you activate in the settings menu, you activate the Wi-Fi of the camera, you connect your phone to it and that way you can already access all the photos, all the videos without even opening the camera. So while all the salt water is on it, you just connect via Wi-Fi, you can download all the photos and videos in either the full resolution or downgraded resolution, up to you, and you get it into the app. Now, what you get in the app as well is a basically logbook. So it shows you the, the graph of your dive, plus lots of little spots on the graph, and each one of these spots represents a photo or a video that you have taken during your dive. So it really makes for a nice, well, sort of memory collection of your dive and you can pinpoint every image that you have down to one dive, one location. Which is ultimately one of the main ideas of Paralens because they say every dive counts and this way you can add to a global collection of data in terms of video and photo that then gets uploaded on the Paralens website. So I really like the effort mostly because we are one of the people who might eventually end up using all this data, but it just makes for a nice teamwork effort of everyone to feed data into one place. So for that alone, loving that thing. Another thing that's really handy about it is there's hardly anything that can break. So the case is tough, it's metal, and there's really only the glass in the back, which gives you access to the little screen, and the glass in the front with the lens. Other than that, there is nothing that could potentially break. So we dropped it a couple of times, I hate to say, but it did happen, it does happen all the time, and nothing happened. And the only thing you really wanna watch out for is the back, when you screw it off, that's basically your access to two things, the memory card on the top, but also to your charging port in the middle. So in order to charge it or to download the images straight from the memory card on your computer, you need to open it up. So the only time where you really have to be careful is when you close it back up again. You wanna make sure that all those three, three O-rings, which is really nice, but you wanna make sure that those are clean and properly greased. Not over greased, of course, but properly. And then you just close it up again. Only issue that we realized after, and that's half a year of daily use in salt water, is that the ring tends to get a little stiff. So right now I just cleaned it again, but after I'd say three months of daily use, it was getting a little stiff. So all you gotta do is, if you push it out with your thumbs a little, you can actually take it off. I would not suggest to do it unless you actually have to. So underneath you will find two plastic rings that you can take off, well, two halves of the plastic ring. One of them has metal pieces inside, so that's why you see a little bit of rust on here, because we do use it in salt water all the time. So, uh, what you can do then is take a little bit of sanding paper or something to scratch off the rust, and really just the rust, don't go mad. And then put it back together, in a way that if you look closely, you'll see that there's little bumps on this plastic piece, even more on the other one. So you want the bumps, close to the long end of the camera, just like this. Put those back on. And then for the blue ring, there's really just one way to slot on. So just make sure that you align the cutouts in this blue ring with the bumps on the black ring. And after cleaning it all up, you can just push it back 
on. Go. So, and then slot it back in, that's it. And if your ring moves freely again, like this, then you won. So that's really it. At the beginning I was very hesitant on actually taking it apart, but really there's no opening underneath. So it's all still sealed, it's all still properly closed off, but it does make it a lot easier to turn that ring again. So the first attempt was just to spray with WD-40, which helped a little bit, but it didn't really do the trick. So taking it apart, cleaning it out properly, that's really the only way to go. So, but that's it for the power lens from my end. Really love it and hope you like this one. If you do have a power lens as well, please do leave us a comment and let us know how it worked out for you. If you do have the Vaquita, let me know as well because I'm really, really curious about getting one of those. And I hope to get to test that soon. Alright, that's it for me. See you all next week. Bye.